Jaume Lenisti and welcome back. And I'm re I was really excited to make this week's video. Really excited to um, just talk about my sort of breakdown of the Udinese game. A lot of things I've taken of note, observations, and I um, the guys did a great job on the podcast on Monday. Obviously, we had Martin on. Um, they did a really good job. You know, it's like thirty minutes of really breaking down the game, talking about each goal. I wanted a few. I want to talk about a few things myself because there were obviously I wasn't able to make the podcast this week. So there are a few things I took away from it: observations um, and things potentially looking forward when regards to sort of have we resolved things uh, as regards to just you know Rafael Leal? Have we got? solutions in the bank when it comes to um you know is our attack finally balanced and so there's a lot of things like that i want to talk about a few maybe not negative things but things that obviously purely we'll be looking at as well from the fixture and um an observation i made just in general of the league when you look at the league table no one drew a single game it was all just wins and losses it looked like a, just like an nba like table it was crazy but obviously you have your fra your favorite sides in syria you have your teams that um, are expected to succeed, which would be like the, the generic top eight, Milan, Inter, Juventus, Napoli, Roma, Lazio, Atalanta and um, Fiorentina, all registering wins on the first game week, which I think it's something that when we look towards this season, I think it's something we're going to expect quite a lot of, just because when you look at the teams as well, like Hellas Verona, like Sassuolo, like Torino, Somewhat of your bogey size, you didn't, you know, they can drop point. You can drop points against them just because they're very like, you know, very tough to play against. They have a few outstanding players, but those players are now moved on. You know, Torino have lost Brema, Pobega, and Balotti. Sassuolo have lost uh, Scamacca. They're about to potentially lose uh, Raspadori to Napoli, and then uh, Hellas Verona. They've lost Simeone and Caprari. So it, you you look around the league, and I think we're going to see a lot of these game weeks going forward. So that's where it comes much more apparent that your top, your form against the top. You know, eight, seven sides in Serie A needs to be spot on, which is good because obviously if we look historically to last season, even potentially the season before that, last season at least, the points per game average that purely registered against the top seven sides in Serie A was the most superior. So that's good going into that. So the only issue was really, can we register good results against the weaker sides? You know, your bottom 10 sides when you should be winning them against home and away. And you have to look at the Udinese game as a fixture where we've drawn three over the last four as a way to say, yes, we are making some good movements in that regard. So really impressed in that in that front. Um, and it's going to be a very tough league this year. Obviously, a lot of teams have uh, have made some great signings when you regard those sort of Roma, Na uh, you know, Napoli have uh, recruited very well despite losing some key players. Uh, Inter Milan brought back Lukaku. We've spoken about the, the players that other teams are brought back. But I just think it's going to be very competitive. It's really good for the league because in regards to the top teams, the quality's just gone higher. No, no offence, I don't mind having, you know, a balanced league when it comes to, you know, Milan can go to Sassuolo and be worried about not getting a result. But at the same time, are Sassuolo going to be in Europe and represent Italy? No. So I'd rather have a very, very tough, you know, very good top seven to eight teams at the top of the league and let's just represent ourselves really well when it comes to Italy. But um, before I get into the meat of today's video, obviously you're seeing a new shirt I'm wearing. I love my new merchandise. I'm always a sucker for the Milan store. Um, so th this is the goalkeeping away top. Um, got a lot of hype online. Um, Dario, I believe you were the one that sort of caught my eye with your photo when you bought the kit. Mignon obviously was wearing it in the promotion photo and I thought, oh, you know, it looks amazing. Anything that Mignon wears is, is, is an eye catcher because he's got so much style and presence panache but um yeah really had to get hold of it this came in a couple of days after ordering it on the milan store uh, had a few discount codes as well which made the whole purchase cheaper and yeah really i love this, this is one of my favorite kits of the way the colorway is um and i was really impressed with the whole the way the whole purchase went went through because i look back to this quick story with the home kit that i bought the authentic shirt obviously there's a lot of baggage when it comes to the uh the authentic quality take that away of it the the service I had with it was a bit poor when it comes to just this dispatch times, the way it came, and I had a really bad experience. But this time it was a really good experience. Um, came really quick within a space of a couple of days. Um, and it came in this really good box. So, you know, I'm a sucker for pa packaging. This is the uh, the industry that I'm working. Um, and the first one, the authentic shirt when it came in, came in just obviously like a generic shipping box. But this did as well. This came in, in this box here. But Milan have done really good when it comes to um, you know production of turning these boxes into these sort of pieces of art, which is really good. You know, this, I opened the, sh the shirt up and I saw this sort of internal design of all this historical, um, you know, this historical footage 
of Milan. I just, I, I want to sort of keep hold of this because it's really impressive considering the fact this is our packaging within a cardboard box. So really happy with that. Really happy with this new shirt. So anyway, guys, I'm going to get into the Udinese game and the things I've taken away from the fixture now. And um, yeah, let's just really break this stuff down. So let's get straight into the Udinese breakdown. Um, when I go back to my video last week, I sort of did my predicted lineups. There was a, a few differences. Obviously, there were a few injury issues with Giroud, Origi, and uh, CDK just coming into training, starting life at Milan. So, you know, I wasn't really expecting them to start. There was a bit of me just hoping that Giroud might start. And long and behold, Rebic starts at the false nine. Um, Rebic at false nine, but I'm Diaz at the 10. I kind of expected that despite wanting Yassin Adi to start. You know, going into the game, there was a bit of fear, probably more so from Brian Diaz, um, a bit worried about what he can really contribute to the side. Really hoping that he could really take the opportunity uh, by both hands. I wasn't really worried about Rebic because um, despite his form being a bit shaky in preseason, he did get a few goals. We've seen in times where Rebic's confidence has been good, that his performance on the pitch has been good. So um, I wasn't really worried about Rebic, and especially knowing that we had five subs to call upon. And having all those options off the bench as well to peel off would just be something that, despite how the game was going, we could always just adapt in the moment. Um, but what a way to start a season. And it's like goals, goals, goals. It's like, Don't get me wrong, with last season, uh, the 1-0 victory against Brian Diaz, I love clean sheets. I love having a strong defence. But just getting goals on the first day of the season when, you know, everyone's excited. You know, I watched down Milan Club London with Oli Lorenzo. Met a few familiar faces, met a few new faces as well. Shout out to them that I met there on the time, uh, on the day. It was just, just the excitement. He just won the league, so now we want to see some excitement on our first day of the season. We got that. Four goals could have been five. CDK's goal was disallowed. Um, a solid, a really solid performance, I think, all round. I was really impressed um, for many reasons. Uh, coming on firstly to how Liao was sort of treated in the game. Was I impressed with his performance? Not entirely, but you know, as the boys said on the podcast, um, we have such expectations of the player right now, which then changes how we review um, noise in the background. We review how he's going to perform on a day-to-day -day basis. Obviously, there's much more pressure now because he was MVP of last season. Of course, we're going to hold him such heights this season. It's only natural. So the question for me was, can we do? with the rest of the players in the attack and the rest of the players on the team, can they do their best to make Liao's job easier, to make the team's job easier? And despite them doubling up on him, can they take advantage of the space available and the opportunities available? And they did, they did, you know, and we and, and to, to consider not a single new signing started the game, Brahim Diaz, who's been in really bad form and not scored a goal since September. Rebic has, you know, he scored three goals all last season. The fact that those two players came away with a really top performance is something that is just incredible. And I think it's it's a sign that the players are adapting to now the pressure that's coming in with actual rotational players available. You know, Brian Diaz knows that if it's a really poor game, Yassin Adli and CDK are right behind him. Ordegui's there as well for Rebic as well. Um, you know, playing the false nine is not guaranteed with three other strikers in the lineup and even Lazatic as well. I think they're reacting to the pressure and, and it's good because, you know, the pressure creates diamonds and that sort of aspect. But that's exactly what you want to see. The fact that these players can take up the heat and the load away from Rafa Liao. And the fact that he, not had, he didn't, wasn't involved in a single goal on the weekend, Rafa, um, you know, despite playing, having an OK game, nearly scored that goal when he cut into the left as well. So, you know, on another day, he would have scored the fifth goal and we wouldn't be sit here talking about an unimpressive game from Rafa. But um, I was really happy about the way the rest of the team adapted. And, and they are here to say, you know, Rafa, you can have not your best game. They could be doubling up on you, but we'll take the load off your shoulders, especially in a game where we've historically struggled to break down a very tough Udinese side. Um, and previously, we would have struggled. We probably would have in previous fixtures when they doubled up on Rafa or anyone else, say back in the past when we had players like Suzo, they would have doubled up on him because then they would know that they are, that's the biggest threat that we have to score on a goal. And we would have no other answer because we didn't have the personnel or the mentality to break down those sort of teams. Um, so is this credit down to Purely as well for, for finding that this was an, an issue? And not just with players coming into the squad and adding their quality. It's now down... To, you know, finding other avenues to score goals, different opportunities, really putting his players in certain positions where they can thrive. And I think, personally, the Rebic as a false nine thing was certainly a massive, massive influence to that and as well. And we'll come on to... Um, and we'll talk about Rebic now, actually. You know, two goals in a false nine position. Um, as, as I mentioned, three goals in the last season. 
So he's one goal shy away from his total goals from last season. Of course, there were a lot of injuries. Wasn't his best. Um, it was it was a massive adaptation season for him, coming in and out of the team. Rafa's having the season of his life. And Giroud's just coming to the side as well, so we can't even get that false nine position locked down. Um, he just feels like a new signing. He feels like a new signing. Um, when when I look at his his first goal, really impressed me. Obviously, the second goal was a lot of credit goes down to the pressing from Diaz and Macias. The first goal really impressed me. And um, just by the way, he his movement's very different to a typical centre forward. And I saw this against um, Vicenza in a friendly. It was his goal against that, but it's different because the ball came in from the left side and he scored with his left foot. Similar thing happened though. It's near enough identical with goal. He sort of hung back around the penalty spot area while the other defenders were dragged and looking towards the ball. He hung back, hung back found his space. And it was an easy slot in. Very similar to this goal. He sort of, he'd done his move, which... He didn't go with a typical sort of attacking line and defensive line and sort of, you know, hanging off the, the centre back in case the cross comes in for a header. He sort of hung back, hoping that the cross would come into the penalty region. And it was a simple goal. So a lot of credit needs to go down to his choice of movement um, in that regard. So I was really impressed with that. You know, Brahim Diaz as well. We'll come on to him quickly. One goal, one assist, involved in all four goals. What more can you want from a player who is under massive criticism from the whole fan base? mostly including myself as well, so I put my hands up to that. But at the same time, one game does not change everything. We need to see some consistency from Brahim. That is evident. He had a great start to last season. You know, it was like four goals and three assists in the first sort of seven games, and it just fizzled out. You know, COVID was a massive element in that regards, but I do think it now comes down to him to just, just lock in that consistency. Yes, there will be some times where he'll be rotated outside, but understand that when you're on that pitch, make the moments count. I really loved his, his, his choice of shot on the first goal. Really put the sort of their defence under pressure and anything can happen in that regard. And it did. We got the penalty. Um, in the second goal, really just building up the play, cutting back and making that, you know, the smart, simple pass to Calabria who hooks it into Rebic. Um, the pressing on the fourth goal, incredible. Um, just the way he sort of read the situation. He read Macias, we locking down Pereira and knowing that Pereira's going to cut tuck inwards. And I'm going to be right there. And the way he sort of shifts the ball across to his right foot and nutmegs the centre back to obviously get Rebic there available. Liao was waiting as well on the wings in case Rebic couldn't get to it. Um, it was just the right choices made by the player. And even his goal, really good to put his body in the way. Um, it just, yeah, I was really happy with what, for what I saw with the kid. Um, so yeah, a lot of thumbs up goes to Brian Diaz and Rebic from that first game. Sticking with the attack as well. Just, I want to quickly talk about CDK and Origi. Um, CDK from first look perspective, he resembled everything I thought he was going to be. Um, his awareness, his passing, his movement. Uh, I'm curious to see what he's like from the first minute, because obviously he was going against the Udinese side from the 17th minute, which were probably a bit leggy at that point. Not to say that's a discredit to his performance. I was really impressed by him. He got that goal, which was disallowed. Uh, some incredible passing. You know, the one he got he sent off to Giroud was just... Uh, you can see in the technique there's something different there. There's something so much different there. It's just he hits it in the right way. So this is a very a very key player to have in this squad right now. So I'm really, really curious to say to see what he's... I can't get my words out anymore. CDK's just absolutely just blowing me away. Um, I'm really curious to see what he's going to be like from a first minute of the game perspective. And I'm, 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 I'm interested to see if he starts a game against Atalanta. But um, we'll come on to like my predictions for the, uh, the formation that... Purely might register in that side there. Um, Origi played off the main striker. Um, AJ, no, he did not play as a winger. Um, I think you need to be more aware of how positional awareness is. Um, very similar to how Liao plays with the centre forward. Kind of just hangs off him. Um, yes, he comes back and helps defend, but the way he's playing is much more in a central position. And um, obviously he needs to work on his fitness. He's just come back into the squad right now, so I'll really judge him in a couple of weeks' time. Um, but I'd say it looks promising. Um, you factor in that he had a very sort of I feel like his pace is there to be, well, can be attacked, used to attack certain defences in this league, especially if they are going to be having to commit much more when it comes down to uh, maybe trying to get a goal against us. I do feel like Odi is going to be so key to finishing off games and um, really sort of putting him in any hole where we want to play him as a main centre forward or we're going to play him just playing off the centre forward. So really good there from Odi, so I was really impressed. Um, observations, observations now. Made a few. First one is the cam, the centre attacking midfielder. Playing deep, are, we talk about a purely system. We talk about how um, it's not a generic 4-2-3-1. Players aren't so strict into their position. And 
I think Pioli mentioned this about like Sandro Tonali and the player that is usually the more um, the more box to box from a double pivot that they will have much more defensive duties to make up for this year because firstly the lack of Kessie being there in the physical presence and secondly we have much more attacking options in regards so we don't really need them to go gun ho all game when it comes to getting involved with the attack um, so there's that so with the cam. It just looked like a bit of four three three sometimes. There was um, there was a point where CDK came on. And he was he was deeper than the two wingers, which sometimes we saw a lot of last season where the cam would be very pressing and almost going up with the centre forward and playing as a double sort of striker, whereas the wingers had to come back a bit more to help the defensive shape. Um, so there was a bit more of that. There was a bit more of that box to box element by the cam. And regardless if it's Brian Diaz, regardless if it's CDK or if it's Yassin Adli, I think it's just that's perfect for them because they're really good at that in that transitional phase of the game. Um, so I was really impressed with that. I made an observation, obviously, the Rebic goal, being very similar to the uh, the goal we, gained, goal we got against Vicenza. Um, Pioli didn't start any new signings. And the fact of the matter is, we still got a convincing wing. Uh, you know, people want to see new signings. I get it. I do as well. You want to see him on the pitch. But this is typical Italian coaching. They're so pragmatic. They're so, you know, we're the champions still. So playing a team with... The players from last season, they're still champions. So just always sort of hold back that, oh, you know, why are we playing a new signing? These new signings didn't help us to become the champions last year. So just trust the team that is there already. Of course, the new signings will sort of contribute to this side as well. And, and of course, Yassin Adli did not feature. Um, was I disappointed by him not featuring? Slightly. I would have loved to see him on the pitch. But at the same time, understanding the situation and the context of CDK just coming into the squad. Origi just coming back to full-time full training as well. Paul Berger, you know, a, a mishmash preseason. He played the first game against FC Cologne and then he missed the rest of the games due to injury. He's just come back into it. It's much more important that we get those three players some really serious minutes on the pitch as opposed to Yassin Adli who played all the preseason and he smashed it. I know Adli's good. and I don't need to see him obviously improve on his fitness in an in-game scenario. I need to see that be done by the other three players I've just mentioned there. And if anything, that's just purely flexing his muscles with the depth he has available. That one of his best players he had in pre-season didn't feature at all. And we still got a convincing win, win against Udinese. So I look at it in that regard. Um, and the last observation as well, from a negative standpoint, set pieces. Um... The second goal Udinese got, I was really disappointed by the concentration levels. I think that come down to just fatigue and um, that's something that we'll definitely improve on the more games we play. The first goal was just typical Milan. Obviously, we, we are undersized in defence. We didn't get Botman. I'm not saying we needed them. I'm just saying that is one of the things where you do struggle when you don't have so many players above the six foot regard. Um, and we didn't have many. We didn't even start with a recognised striker. Rebic is a false nine. Um, the CS has been asked to do so much more defensively in the sort of in the air, just because we don't have so many tall players. Um, this is something that automatically changes when you play players like Giroud and CDK. Of course, their height is needed. I mean, I'm not sure how tall Giroud is, but he's must be what six three, um, six two, six three, six four. Um, CDK is six four, so we automatically add to that height once we play those players. But in that game. Against Udinese, we were just undersized and we got caught out in the first minute. So it's something that, obviously, of course, Piola needs to work on. Um, and yeah, it's just it's just one of the things you just take as a pinch of salt. But yeah, those are my observations coming away from the Udinese game. Now, with all that being said, and I think we'll go back to the whole uh, the context of this video. Is the attack balanced now? Have we resolved the load being taken away from Rafael Leal, knowing that other players can contribute? Um... Yes and no. I, I I can't give that answer now based off one game. It's still too early to say, but it's certainly a good sign. that Even players that we haven't brought in this summer were able to contribute. Rebic, Bram Diaz, poor seasons last year, were able to contribute in the first game. Hopefully they can keep this momentum going forward. The issue is, for me, and it will always still continue to be the right side of the pitch, um, Junior Macias, for me, didn't have a great game, uh, other than the pressing he did on the fourth goal. I wasn't really impressed by him again. He didn't really take the momentum going from pre-season into this fixture. Um, Salamakers came off the pitch and did his typical um, underwhelming display. I really hoped he put that volley away from the um, from the Benesse, uh long pass, but he didn't. And, you know, I'm not sure I was, I was expecting it. And it comes back down to Ziyech. Um, do we need Ziyech this, this, uh, this season? Do we need Ziyech? Will I want us to get him? Of course I want us to get him. And I think it's the difference. Is it a need or a want? I want to get Ziyech in this club. 
The reason why is because I think I think we can still I I believe we will still win the league without Ziyech. I don't think we'll get that far in the Champions League without Ziyech. And I think that's the difference. And with a transfer that's so it seems so simple to happen. You know, there aren't extensive demands from Chelsea for signing the player outright, even if we can somehow negotiate a loan deal. The wages, I'm sure we can find a way to work around. Um, I understand the numerical positions we have in play with the right winger. We have so many players for the front four positions. But this is this is such a big upgrade as to what we have. It could be such a difference maker in regard to going a bit more further in the Champions League. But at the same time, does that mean it's a need? No, it's not a need. The need would be if we had no... You know, uh, we had crap, at, you know, awful options in attack and we needed him to come in. It's a want. And I do believe, like I said, I do believe we can still win the league without Ziyech into this squad. Um, but it's just one of those big things that would be the cherry on top. It would be the perfect Mercato going into the season. Um, but personally, I do feel like we need a centre midfielder to add this ensemble. Hopefully someone who's much more explosive, um, physical. Not say they have to be like Kessie, but someone who's uh, definitely better than Bakayoko. Um, I do like the player that is being linked with. Um, I made a note of his name actually, uh, Rafael Onyedika um, from the club in Denmark. He looks very good from what I've seen so far. Um, someone that'd be great there, and obviously another centre back. I just I think loaning out Zach Gabriel would just be the wise move. Getting someone in who's fast at the centre back position to help us play this pressing nature is key. Um, these are the two things I think is a need, whereas Ziyech is more of a want. And my last point before I get on to the Atalanta prediction and who I think will be the, the predicted lineup, Tommaso Pobega. Um, got a bit of stick for how he looks. Clunky, lethargic, kind of running like a video game character. I, I, I understand it didn't look great. He just came back from injury as well. Um, I think patience is key with the player. Being in and out of different teams every season. He definitely has some quality there. Does he just look a little bit slow, potentially? It's difficult, you know, with our midfield and the demands that are required for them to be very aggressive. Um, you know, it's hard when you compare someone with any sort of taller frame or much more slower stature comes in and you want to compare him to like a Benacer or Tonali or even Krunic sometimes, the way he presses. Um, but I'm, I'm, I'm confident with a bit of time, with a bit of time with training and adaptation with purely system, we gave him the renewal. I'm sure we're confident in the player and his abilities. I, I do feel like we'll get the best out of Tomás Um But at the same time, I'm happy with the the other options we have so far. Like I said, I do think we need another option there, a different profile as in, in that regard. Um, Pobega will has it, have his use this season against certain positions. Don't get me wrong. Um, it would just be a very selective thing. I don't personally see him playing in Champions League games uh, because of this. I see that much more being a Benacer and Tonali thing. Um, but certainly in Serie A, I do feel like he has his use. So um, I feel we need to just kind of hold back a little bit of criticism and judgment on Pobega until we give it a few months, maybe six months into the season and see how he's doing from there. Now the Atalanta preview. We play away at Atalanta on Sunday night. Big fixture. We've obviously got some good form against them in recent seasons, um, despite, you know, I've been, I've been looking at the sort of 3-0 drubbing they gave us, um, which had a lot of injuries going back to that January fixture in 2021, I want to say. Yeah, 2021. Um, yeah, we got some good form against them. I completely lost my trail of thought there. We got some good form against them. I'm confident going into this fixture. Very good away from home. You know, last the last two won the last two games away from home. Um, look very confident against them in the two 0 victory at the end of last season. Um, I'm 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 confident going into this game. Um, we do, we certainly have much more depth than what they have. Um, the key will be probably who starts the game for me. And this is very a bit of a head scratcher for purely. Because what last week seemed to be a necessity to play players due to fitness, um, and certain players obviously just come back from injury and bedding themselves into the team, with another week on his hands, and obviously Sandro Tonali coming back into training as well, who does Purely choose to start this game? And I'm going to go from my prediction of the lineup. Um, the back line is still stays the same with the keeper and goal. Benacer will start. I think he'll play the go to play Krunic in midfield. I just feel like he's going to play it safe with Krunic. Uh, had a solid game against Udinese. Um, I just think it's a bit of a risk bringing back Sandro Tonali this soon. Maybe give it another week. I think it's a safe bet. Uh, start at Krunic. The front four, once again, Rafael Leal will be on the left. Messias on the right, just because, um, I, once again, with the right, I just don't think it's you, you keep players in the natural positions. The question mark will be who he puts at the cam and who he puts at the centre forward position. Spoke about Brian Diaz and Rebic having good games. 
One got two goals. One got a goal and assist and involved in all four goals. Do you take those players out of the team? Or do you ride the momentum of confidence? Giroud's back into training. Origi's back. CDK, Yassin Adli. All you could wage arguments or debates that they should be starting this game. Personally, um, if I was to pick, not to say obviously I've seen them on a daily basis, but if I was to pick, we do need a bit of height. So I would play, I would play CDK at the cam. No offense to Brian Diaz. I just feel like against Atalanta, they have some physical players. We're going to need that physicality. And then I would play Rebic as the false line. Um, I believe he started the game when we beat them 3-2 away from home last season. Um, I also believe he started the game when we beat them away from home 2-0 the season before, um, when obviously we qualified for the Champions League. Rebic is in some good confidence form here. And we can always adapt as, as the game goes on. That's the beauty of the five sub rules and our depth. But I think starting the game, we certainly need a bit of height there. So I'll be interested to see if he plays CDK over Brahim Diaz. But at the same time, I wouldn't be surprised if he just opts for the same team that played against Udinese will feature against Atalanta from the starting lineup. Um, so that's it for today, this week, guys. Um, obviously, I always sign off by saying I hope we get that victory. A bit more of a longer video this week. Um, I kind of I enjoy just sort of talking quite natural about performances and letting things flow, kind of like the Gary Neville podcast, but without... That's criticism of Man United. But um, yeah, hope you enjoy it. A bit more of a longer video this week. So until next time, guys, let's get the win. Forza Milan.